Hi guys and welcome to a very windy day here in the UAE with half the desert sort of blowing into my face at the moment but nonetheless we shall persevere because we are going to bring you a review of the 2017 GMC Acadia. So this of course is the second generation GMC Acadia but unlike the previous one it's not just the Chevy uh, Traverse that's been rebadged as a GM. This one actually shares its platform with the all new brand new Cadillac XT5. It not only shares its platform, but it shares its engine as well. But I'll come back to that. The other thing to note about the new GMC Acadia, which is very important, I think, is that unlike where most cars are getting bigger and bigger with every generation, this one has actually got smaller. It's slightly shorter and it's not quite as wide as the previous car. And in doing so, what they've also managed to do is reduce the weight. They've actually given it a diet and it's lost 300, over 300 kilograms of weight on this car and that actually takes it down to uh, quite a surprising total weight uh, of 1,794 for a, uh, you know, I don't know if we could say full size SUV but certainly uh, a, a medium to full size SUV because this does have three rows of seats. So what we get underneath the bonnet is a new 3.6 V6. Like I said, we've seen it in the brand new XT5 and we can now get it into this car as well. The only difference is that whereas the Cadillac XT5 gets a new eight speed automatic transmission, this one uh, gets a six speed. Um, but we'll look at how that is to drive a bit later on. The engine output is 310 brake horsepower and 271 pounds foot of torque. So how much is it, Gav? Well, I can tell you, it starts from as little as 129900 which is $35,000. That's for the base model SLE spec. But that does include three years servicing package and four years roadside assistance. You get an SLT, the all-terrain model from 168,000 dirhams, which is $46,000. Uh, but what you really want and what I would really want is this nicely plushly specced out Denali all-wheel drive version, which is at $199,954,000. So here we go. Let's look at the boot first. I can open it with the key fob, double click. And there you go. It opens up. Now, and there's a button, of course, uh, to close it and a handle to pull it down. You can also, I think, set the heights on these things as well. Um, this is quite handy because underneath here, there's two pretty deep storage bins just below that. So that's quite handy as well. Another power supply. Man, this thing is, wants to make sure you are fully powered up. Uh, you know, a little uh, net hook thing there uh, on this side as well. And uh, another deep bin down there to add some more stuff and as I mentioned of course the, the third row passengers get their own little cup holders and bins and a power supply now here's a really clever thing you've come from Ikea and you've got the rear seats down and you're like oh no it's a bit longer than I thought and I can't get I can't get it all the way in so to speak and you need a little bit more room so that seat there that handle there I'm gonna pull that handle watch what happens see isn't that handy so anyway, what about these rear seats? Well, that's easily pulled back up from here and from here. And you should be able to now see what they're like. I mean, they're basically two individual seats. Uh, I would suggest for kids, but um, probably regular size adults for shorter journeys. So pretty handy back here. So the seat, of course, was down. So we can now literally just easily push it back now how did you get down because obviously there was a handle over there now this handle actually only gets it down so far and slides it forward which is quite handy to get access to the rear seat but if you wanted to get it all the way down flat like you did before you actually pull this handle here and then it goes all the way down so very very sensible now let's get into this thing these of course like i said this particular denali uh version has a 2 plus 2 plus 2, but I believe you can get the GMC Acadia with a 2 plus 3 and a load space in the back, or a 2 plus 3 plus 2. So you can get different configurations. It's very, very spacious back here. I mean, I have no trouble whatsoever, and I, of course, am 6 foot 2. Uh, plenty of headroom, plenty of knee room, lots of room for my feet. A walk through from here. I've got a cup holder here. I've got a deep bin here on the doors as well. Talking of deep bins, get a load of this. I just want to show you this, right? I open this and it just goes on and on and on and on. In fact, you can just pull it out if you want to. 
Oh no, I've broken it! No, you haven't broken it. No, it just goes back in again. It's a draw. Actually, I've broken it. No, there you go. goes back in. More usefully back here, and something that is very important to my kids, for example, and if you have kids, I'm too sure it is important for them as well, is having rear AC controls of their own. And uh, there is a three-point power supply and two USBs. Did I mention there was also a USB in the back? I might have already mentioned that. That's fantastic. It's got power supplies everywhere. It's got a USB, one USB for the third row of seats as well as these two USBs up here, and then two USBs in the front as well. And a power supply there, power supply in the back, and the three-point plug there. I mean, it's fantastic. There is a big full-length sunroof, as you can see, which combines with the other one up there. This one is fixed. That one slides back. You've got individual reading lights here, and you have AC vents as well. Um, and all the rest is pretty straightforward. Uh, very, very nice indeed. Uh, let's see what it's like in the front. Here we are in the front of the GMC Acadia, the 2017 model. And uh, as you can see, it's got a big instrument panel with a large center digital uh, part there. Now that digital part, you can actually uh, decide how you want to, to view it. So for example, if I go down to settings and then uh, I can then change the display theme, uh, 14 or 15 pages, wow. Um, and I can change, there you go. So if I go into touring, I can get just the big and, and get various things there underneath. So if I go back, uh, I can get, for example, uh, the nav, the nav could be there. The phone is not connected at the moment. I've disconnected it, obviously, but it does have full Bluetooth capability. Uh, it also has the projection thing on the uh, GMC and Telelink, which of course means it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, this is obviously an unclassified road, um, and so therefore it's not on there. But you get info, and then you get all your... Now, 6.9 um, kilometers per liter I've been getting. I've worked that out to about 14 liters per 100 kilometer. So that's what you're getting, which is roughly what you'd expect for uh, a large SUV uh, of this type. So that's what you've got there. Obviously, on the left, you've got rev counter, you've got your temperature, you've got your fuel, uh, and all the rest of it. So that's all pretty handy. Lots of buttons on the uh, steering wheel. And this side, of course, was controlling the instant panel on here. And this side, I've got my cruise control, my, my heated steering wheel for some reason. I don't know why I need that, but anyway. But I've also got cooled and heated seats down here, if you can make out. Cooled and heated. I see the fan come on. You can hear that. So over here, I've got the cruise control. Now this is actually adaptive cruise control and it will actually bring you to a complete halt should you want to use it in traffic, which you can do. So it will set the speed, it will accelerate and it will actually come to a complete halt if it needs to do so. Otherwise, it's all pretty straightforward down here. I've got a deep uh, bin over here for the next one on the door, a little pocket there, all power and everything like that, memory uh, seats and there's the adjustment for the hatch as I was mentioning earlier. It also has lane keep assist, so it'll do that thing where it'll try to stay in lane for a little while before it decides you're being an idiot and says, Right, put your hands back on the steering wheel! And you're like, okay, I better do that. It's not autopilot yet. Not yet in this car. This car, like I said, has a six-speed auto. We'll try that in a minute. Down here, we have got the two, I don't know if you can make that out, but two additional USBs and another power supply, which you won't be able to see. There it is. There's the power supply down there. Uh, I think I've hit the heat cool seats on again. There you go. Two cup holders, a pretty deep um, box down here, which is handy. Nice bit of trim here. Nice. This is quite charismatic. A little bit of slash of of, of you know wood and aluminium style uh, trim there. A couple of flies have tried decided to hitchhike in the car. Uh, never mind what to do. Uh, sunroof, like I said, you know you can open this from here. Sorry, got wrong hand. Um, there it goes. So full length, and of course this is a tilt and slide up here. I don't know if you make out. There you go. Tilt and slide, all the rest of it, and lights as well, plus for your glasses. GMC and Telelink, uh, like I said, it's got a projection system and all that. It's got sat now. The cameras are very good because if you go into camera, not only do you got the reversing camera and indeed the front camera when you're parking front into the pavement, it gives you a front camera so you can see how close you want to get it. But what's really handy is the 360. And in fact, if I turn the steering wheel, you can actually see which way the steering is pointed and how close that might be to the curb, for example, if you want to avoid uh, getting the wheels curved. Uh, great stereo system. I have been running that. Fantastic. So all of it pretty much standard fare. There is your uh, stop start button and uh, your parking brake is on this side. All pretty much standard fare. So I think the thing to do now is just take it for a short drive. Now, this car is not um, 
you know, this isn't a driver's car. Let's be honest. I mean, this is a family SUV. But having said that, you know, uh, it does pack a little bit of a punch because of that quite virile V6. I just want to show you this knob here as well because that is your sort of all-terrain sort of thing. And it's it basically it's default. It's sort of a part-time all-wheel drive. So it actually is in front-wheel drive um, until you switch it over to four-wheel drive. And then it's got like uh, slippery conditions and when you're towing something as well. There's also a sports mode, and I'll discuss that in a minute. I don't necessarily see the point of a sports mode, but there may be because I'll show you why in, in just a tick. It doesn't have paddle shifts um, on this car. It doesn't really need them. Buttons on the back of the steering here are for volume and for changing the channel. So I'll put it straight into drive. And... Uh Traction is on, everything is on, but the, this such a torquey little thing that it's, it does wheel spinny stuff. I mean, how cool is that? It's a bit naughty. You don't want to be doing that outside the school gates because you get into trouble with the principal. But it is a little bit of fun. Let's be honest. There's a little bit of fun. I know you can, can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Let me just move this uh, thing. Now, just to demonstrate that you don't have to do that if you don't want to do that, because what you can do then is going back to this knob over here. If I just, let me just show you on, the, on this here. If I do twist it, all wheel drive, and then I twist it again into that sport with all wheel drive. And now I attempt the same thing. Clean getaway, instant traction, clean getaway. I don't have performance figures on this car, but um, I believe from what I've seen, uh, it's probably zero to 100 in about seven, just over seven seconds. So, decent performance we've established, good kick down. This, I said, like I said, is a six speed. It's got the little buttons on here, it's kind of tiptronic, but why would you use them? Um, not quite as good, obviously, as the eight speed in the Cadillac, but not a big loss. I mean, you're not really going to miss it. You know, to be honest, there are times when it hesitates a little bit, but really, in most 99% of times and conditions, it works absolutely fine. Uh, decent ride, handles the road very, very well, and Handling, of course, quite responsive the electric power steering on this. No, not bad at all. So, uh, not bad for a car of this size and this bulk. I mean, you, you can see the response on this, but very, very secure, very, very safe. Again, I'm not saying this is a sports car, but they have taken some effort to make sure it is a uh, car that will hold its own in Middle East traffic, which tends to be on the fast side, but and also reasonably satisfying for the driver, but very importantly, very easy to drive. Good visibility all around. The mirrors help. The mirrors are quite large, electrically adjustable. And again, even over your shoulder with the third row headrest down and no middle headrest run on this car in the, in the second row, it's actually very good. Very easy to place as well because, of course, it's shrunk wrapped. It's shrunk down a little bit. It's been left in the wash too long and it's a little bit smaller than it used to be. So suddenly parking it and maneuvering it and taking it into car parks becomes a lot easier. No issues with the braking or anything like that. Very, very, uh, just as you would expect it to be. And you've got a little bit of a grunty note there, which is, again, kind of satisfying. So all in all, a very good effort, a very good second generation follow up to what was actually a popular um, mid to full size, almost a full size SUV actually, the Acadia. This one, they've shrunk it down, made it a little bit more practical, but retained all of the values of the uh, GMC Acadia, but added a dose of class by boring uh, a large part of the new Cadillac XT5. So a big thumbs up for me. Hope you enjoyed that review. It's full review to be on motoringme.com. You'll find it there. Please do check us out there and also follow us on all social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Just search for Motoring Middle East and the same goes for YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe and tell all your friends. You can also follow me, Shazad Sheikh, and you can find me on Instagram, uh, uh, Shazad Sheikh, and you can find me on uh, Twitter and Snapchat, Shazad underscore Sheikh. I'd appreciate it if you go and follow me too. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one.